This is Chris Greer with Packet Pioneer, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about TCP timestamps. So timestamps is an option within TCP that's right there in the TCP header, and we're going to take a look at it and see how we can use it for troubleshooting. Before I get into the content of the video though, first I'd like to invite you to follow right along with me by going up to bit.ly slash TCP timestamps. Now I've also included that link in the description of the video down below. So you can click on that and you can follow right along by going to CloudShark. Now the trace file within CloudShark, just so you know, it's gonna have different IP addresses than the one you see in the video. That's because I've changed, I've sanitized this trace file that you see there on CloudShark. However, we're just razor focused on the TCP protocol and that part of the header. So all of the pertinent things that you see in the video, you'll be able to follow along with right along here. Now, if alternatively, if you'd like to download this trace and open it locally with your copy of Wireshark, you can just come over to export download file and you can follow right along. So welcome back. Let's get into it. Now, timestamps are something that you'll find in some TCP stacks, not all, but some. Enable this option, and you'll find it if we just select any TCP packet in the conversation, come down to the TCP header, come down here to options, and if the stack is using timestamps, you'll see timestamps here. So we're gonna talk about what these big scary values mean and how to use them for troubleshooting. Well, basically, TCP uh, on each side when it first connects to a link partner on the other side, TCP doesn't have any idea about the network in between. No idea about the network round trip time, uh, how long or how far away is that link partner it's trying to connect to. It could be in the, the room next door on the same ethernet switch, or it could be on the other side of the world, many router hops away. It has no idea. So on the timestamps option enables TCP to get a better idea of the network between those two endpoints. That way, it can reduce its retransmission timer and make better use of that network in between for, for better throughput. So uh, let's talk about how this actually works. So here I have two endpoints that I've connected to each other. Uh, let's first take a look at that first sin. Now coming down into the options, I can see that this side is using the TCP option and it's saying TS value, so timestamp value, and then this long, scary four byte number. Now, this number is absolutely uh, irrelevant in terms of what the actual digits mean. It's just a number that's derived from this side as a starting point. What I expect is the opposite side, if it can use alt timestamps as well, to echo this number back to me in the echo reply. Right, so since this is a sin, I haven't heard anything from the other side, so I don't have a number to echo back to the other side. I'm just starting here. I'm sending this number to my link partner. I should expect, I just used the last four digits here, 9159 in the reply. So our timestamp value from the other side is a much different number, but the echo reply is exactly the same number that I sent to that link partner. So what that does is there's my echo number back. So now I have an idea of how much time it took to hear back from that link partner. I timestamped that first packet and that number was echoed back to me 124 milliseconds later. Now the number that the other side uses, again, is completely arbitrary. It really has no um, function in terms of the numeric value. Rather, this is the four byte number that the opposite side has selected to begin with. So now what I'm going to do is take this 9661 and in the ACK, I'm just going to cut and paste that number 9661 into my echo reply and send that back to my link partner. Now what some stacks do, if you notice, my timestamp value has changed. It's gone up slightly. Okay, so again, I, I started in this direction with five, or I'm sorry, 9159. But now the next packet I send in this direction now I'm using 9283. Okay, so what some stacks do, not all, some, what they'll do is they'll take the starting value, they'll add 124 milliseconds, they'll add the milliseconds to that starting number, and that will be used as the next starting timestamp value. Again, not all stacks do it this way. Sometimes they just increment according to some internal clock. Um, they they do they are supposed to increment it, but uh, I have seen at least from my MacBook Pro that I'm using, I've seen it increment by the network latency. So 
It's kind of an interesting thing that it does. So really, these timestamps, they allow each side to echo back these numbers, and they will gradually increment as, this, as the connection goes along. And they are just used so TCP on each side can get a good idea of what the network latency is between the endpoints to better judge what the network round trip timer should be. So that's what timestamps are. Now, these timestamps are not to be confused with the timestamps that you see down here at the bottom. These timestamps are Wireshark derived numbers that allow me to measure the amount of time that's actually taken up in the TCP connection. So you can see here, I just expanded that. So I can see time since first frame in this TCP stream is 124 milliseconds. Time since previous frame in this TCP stream, right? So as this, as I go along, these values show me how long since this TCP stream began and how much time since the previous packet. Now, these timestamps are something that I actually have to enable in Wireshark. So to do that, all I have to do is right click the TCP header, come down to protocol preferences, and this is where I can come to calculate conversation timestamps. We wanna make sure that that is checked. Once we have that checked, now we have Wireshark timing the specific values within the context of this TCP conversation. This is something really nice to enable so that we can take time since previous frame. I can come down here and add that as a column. And now I know within the context of this conversation, where were my pauses? What are my high delta times uh, between packets within this conversation? That way, when I remove my filter, I can take and sort on that column and then I can see for the entire trace file, what's the most amount of time between any two TC packets, TCP packets within context of that conversation. So pretty interesting. Uh, so again, TCP timestamps, just something that TCP can use to measure that network latency uh, for every packet it sends. And TCP timestamps down here, that's what a Wireshark drive value to allow me to measure that latency, uh, those delays between packets within TCP conversations. So thanks for stopping by my channel, and hopefully this is helpful to you in understanding how TCP works. I'll see you again soon.